Well, hi, I'm Liz Holpin from Pinhole Quilting. And I'm planning to go through with you today how to do three threads through one needle. It's a question a number of people have asked on, on recent forums on Facebook, and I thought it'd be worthwhile sharing with you my knowledge of it. Essentially, this was uh, from a class that Debbie Brown, who's a handy quilter educator, uh, taught when I was um, up at the Cotton Patch in about 2014, 2015, when we were running classes um, with Handy Quilter. And uh, Debbie had a great class. It was, I learned so much. I was unbelievably skeptical about the concept of running three threads through one needle. And I'm sure that most of you will be too. I hope to show you that you shouldn't be too skeptical. Uh, this machine is capable, along with the other machines, such as the Simply 16, Avanti, Amara, Forte, and Infinity. Um, I haven't tried it on the new Moxie um, yet, um, but you know, let's, uh, let's see if we can do it on there as well. Now, there's a couple of things you need to uh, be aware of. You've got two cone holders on this machine, and we use both of those. So the one we normally use, this one at the back, I've got the red thread on. Uh, that is going to be used and as well as that the other one plus we've got the optional horizontal spool pin so I'm going to mount my other threads now I've got all uh, let me see I've got all cotton but they're all different weights so I've got um, cotty 30 weight two ply um, in the states that is uh, sold cotty brand uh, is sulky um, it's a Gunalt uh, GS UK cotton patch stock cotty in the UK, and it's a 30 weight two ply thread. So each one we are gonna take through in turn and thread it up. We are also going to use a larger needle. Obviously we've got a thicker thread. By combining these three threads, we've got a thicker thread. So we're gonna use a 125 slash 20 sharps needle. And you can get those uh, from us or your handy quilter dealer uh, or handy quilter itself. Uh, we'll use the grace bucket. So each time I'm going to make sure I've flossed it correctly and I've already spotted that I haven't done that right. I'm going to put it through two out of the three. This is something you will need to play with. Oh, and if you can hear any bangs in the background, they are not explosions. They are explosions. It's Guy Fawkes night. And that means that there are some bonfire night fireworks going on in the background. Not a lot I could do about that, but it just shows you this is being filmed in the UK around the 5th of November. Remember, remember, for the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason, and plot. Back in the day when good old Mr. Guy Fawkes tried to blow up the Houses of Parliament. And we now celebrate every year. Oh, I'm probably in the way here. Let me just move back. I was just getting a bit casual there about the camera angle. So I've put it through first and second. I'm going to thread the second thread through the tension discs, under the stirrup, through the take-up lever, like so, and then through the piggy tail from front to back, pull it down. So I've done two out of the three. If you've missed any steps, just make sure you double check because it does make a difference. Um, we had Glenn Salter, one of the engineers from, actually one of the really good technical support guys from Handy Quilter over here last year. And he went through and taught us everything we needed to know about the engineering side of stuff. And as he said, everything is there for a reason. I like it to Italian cookery. Every ingredient is required. Okay, so this is the last one. I'm just going to feed it through. It's really important. Tension assembly, very, very important to get it through the tension assembly. And through the take-up lever, 
Da -da. Through the pigtail. Right, I've got all three. Make sure that it's through the tension assembly, all three of them, by just pushing your fingernail in the tension assembly, pushing the discs apart and just letting it run smoothly. Let them go and you are good to go. Let's do some testing. Always test out, always test out your threads. I even go to the extent that the piece I'm gonna work on right now is actually gonna be a sample for a piece that I'm gonna do for real, but I want to experiment with all of the techniques prior to committing to my fabric. And I also find in that process, I refine my design. Now, you can sometimes get more than one through the needle at the same time. Can I twist it? I really wanted to show you this. I just did it in the dry run. Okay, I got two out of three. The third one, I should just be able to edge in there. And it is there. Make sure that they're all sort of level pegging. Get rid of your bits, sample fabric. This sample fabric is going to keep me warm in winter. It's so huge. Right. All three threads are threaded. I've checked my tension discs. Make sure do, do, do everything is done as you would expect. Needle down, needle up. Bring up your bobbin thread. My bobbin thread is a very fine 80 weight polyester deco bob pre-wound. Um, note that there's a massive difference between the top and the bobbin thread bottom, sorry, the top and the bottom thread, but that's not a problem. Okay, I always just double check with about three stitches to make sure it is sewing correctly. I'm using my sweet spots. Cut off your threads after you sew in about an inch. More fireworks in the background. And I am ready to go. I'm just going to check the back, see what that is like. That is looking exceptionally good. I'm going to show you in a second. Now I would normally use this for filler. So I'm on my quilt in a moment when I transfer um, and I start the video again for the, for the quilt proper. Well, this is my, my sample quilt. Um, I'm going to be using this for uh, 2020. I'm making a 2020 quilt. So this is a great way to fill in areas because you've got three threads. It's going to create some nice, dense stitching. One thing you can do that Debbie Brown suggested you do, which I think is a really good idea, is when you do this, you can just use your top fabric and a layer of wadding. When you finish this really intense quilting, you can then put another layer of wadding and your backing fabric underneath. Um, and that, that way, it'll look neat on the back, nobody will really notice. And that's what I did on the sample that I posted on Facebook. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like. Uh, let's have a look, I'll do a, I'll do a still as well on the video. But just to show you that has stitched beautifully and on the back it looks like that there's a few pokies but that's to be expected because we're pushing the thread through so that's a really nice result i'm really happy with that i'm very happy with my uh, my threads so again the threads on this one are um 30 weight two ply cotty king tuck 40 weight three ply and at the back i've got presencia i'm sorry metla silk finish Silk finish is a 50 weight. Cotton. They're all cotton. Okay, I'll catch you in a bit.